Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thumbs One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J. And today we're hopping into Dead Space Extraction. This is one of the games in the book, a thousand one video games you just play before you die. You need a zapper because you gotta kill things. And you can't hold a controller without that extra bit of plastic. <laughs> I know I've ranted about this before, but those. These Wii U add-ons were just pieces of plastic, like... I don't know, I kind of at some level understand... It's kind of interesting, it like changes the controller a bit, but on the flip side, it's like it really doesn't make a huge difference, so I don't know. Um... It is what it is, I don't have a zapper, who cares? Guys, Dead Space Extraction here. Dead Space is a renowned series that I have long wanted to play. I never thought the first version of Dead Space I'd ever played would be on the Wii. Uh, the Wii? I was gonna say the Wii U, but no, this is the Wii. Um, but, uh, you know what? It's what we're doing. And I think there is another Dead Space in the book, so we will get to play one on a controller, which is just, for me, I prefer that. Uh, but this is a horror-themed game. Back in the day, you never would have seen a game this dark on a Nintendo console. But the Wii was breaking all kinds of rules, man. It was getting old people exercising, playing tennis. It was getting your mom to buy a Wii. And it was giving you demons to haunt your nightmares. I was thinking of saving this game until a little later in October, but truthfully... You know, already I'm driving around, I'm, you know, like, smelling false smells in the air, people are starting to put up, like, pumpkin patch corn mazes and stuff. I kind of feel like August barely ended, and already we're in the Halloween mode, which, you know what? Fall is probably one of my favorite seasons, uh, you know. It's definitely in the top four. And so, I guess I would say that I'm okay with it, I'm okay with it. So anyway, let's go ahead and start a new profile here. Um, one thing that I continue, I think one, one of the reasons I don't like the Wii is that I've said this, I'm just not a huge fan of this motion control. I'm, I'm far too lazy when it comes to wrist action. Like already I'm like, man, I got to hold my wrist like this the whole video. So, you know, I'm just, I'm a very lazy human is what I've decided. So if you love the Wii, you probably just have stronger wrists than me and more patience. Probably better looking and more intelligent too, you know. You got you're the whole package is what I'm saying. Whereas I'm scraping through. Alright, let's go to story mode, I guess. Chapter one on Aegis 7, Sam Caldwell and a crew of engineers are ready to extract an artifact uncovered during the planet the planet crack preparations. I feel like Dead Space reminds me a lot of Doom. Only I know it is its own thing. It's not like a Doom clone, you know, like a not like a cheap knockoff. I mean, the, the line between knockoff and homage, I feel like, just depends on if you're good. If if you're crappy, you're a knockoff, and if you're good, you're an homage. Or like a spiritual successor, you know? Um, so we have the rivet gun, and... Well, that all sounds fine to me. Sure. Should we play an impossible mode? Oh, they don't even let you. We're, we haven't even earned the right to, to go on an impossible difficulty. I mean, I guess that's fair. The game doesn't know us. Doesn't know if we suck. We're probably not going to be too good off the get-go. But anyway, you know, I've long heard that playing um, shooters on the Wii uh, can be actually more precise and better than playing with the controller. And you know what? I kind of actually believe that maybe there's some truth to that. So I'm, I'm going to give this one an honest shot. Um... I mean, I have always believed that playing shooters with a mouse is infinitely more accurate than playing with a controller. Despite the fact that most of the first-person and third-person shooters I play these days are just on controllers. Because again, it's the whole laziness factor. Like, do I want to sit at my desk holding a mouse and keyboard with proper posture? Or do I want to, like, laze around on a couch, you know discarded McDonald's packages lying about me, you know, shirt strewn about, you know, drooling on myself holding a controller, right? This is just like night and day, so I go the lazy route. I like to just sort of lounge as I play video games typically. Um, but, uh... If you had an imagination, you'd be but you know, I, I, I do we'll think playing with a mouse is more precise. I've always believed that. I um, I've had friends who, who've Bye. debated it with me, I and I feel like I it's you. one of those things where it's like, I agree with you, the controller's more comfortable, and it's easier to chill. 
but I think there's just no debate. I mean, you can just be more accurate with the mouse. And maybe we can be more accurate with a Wiimote. Who knows? Maybe the Wiimote's sort of like a pseudo-mouse. Like, almost a mouse. So it's better than a controller, but worse than a mouse. Or maybe it's better than a mouse. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Have you guys been noticing any Halloween-y stuff occurring? Um, or does this seem a little early for Halloween stuff? Man, this, this already looks so dark. Just the fact that they have glowing spines on their back is... It just... Like, the art and the, the design of this... It just feels so right. I guess sci-fi horror is kind of a, an interesting genre, you know, like... Traditional Halloween is like zombies and monsters and ghosts and demons and stuff. You know, it's very, like, Earthbound. To have... Like, when was the first science fiction horror movie like this ever made? Sort of like an Aliens-style, Doom-style nightmare game. Sort of like Event Horizon, you know? That, that was a classic uh, horror sci-fi movie. But that can't have been the first. There must have been others. There's something a little Lovecraftian about it all, you know? About the, uh... Oh, I picked up a box, I think. There's something a little Lovecraftian about a lot of the, uh, sci-fi horror, how it's sort of, like, cosmic... Um... You know, like, cosmic horror, cosmic dread, fear of the unknown, losing oneself in the darkness of space. I don't know, these guys are talking about something here. I'm just having a, a real metaphysical moment here, guys. My character's lost in a web of his own fears and thoughts. Like, that- look at that, is that not Lovecraftian? Feels cosmic horror -y. We found, like, some sort of ancient artifact. It's gonna- I guarantee it's gonna make dead people come alive. It's gonna work its way in somehow. Dead f we're gonna be shooting dead flesh by the end of- by the end of- these- these three guys are toast. They don't know it yet, but they're- they're just the appetizer for whatever the hell this thing over here is. By the way, I haven't been in control of anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm moving around the Wiimote. Uh, the Wiimote. And I think that's about it. I think actually, I'm remembering now, I believe this is a, a, a rail shooter. Whereas traditional Dead Space games are third-person shooters where you actually can control where you go. But I think this one's a rail shooter, if I'm not mistaken, but... We'll see. I'm ignoring all the, the dialogue, but I'm drinking in the atmosphere. It's, it's great. So yeah, anyway, are you guys noticing, like, is it Halloween, almost? Like, you're, are you starting to get the feel like Halloween's around the corner, falls here? You know, pumpkin spice lattes are about to show up in force. Press B to fire. I guess I gotta shoot these two things. Um... You know, ghouls and stuff are for sale in stores, and... Various other things are happening, I don't know. Is that true? You guys find that? Oh, it's kind of like bugging my wrist. I think another problem is I have to play this at a desk, right? Like, the Wii was designed to be... You were supposed to be a couch potato. You're supposed to be sitting at a couch, like, um, feet away from the, uh... Twist the remote sideways to engage the all-fire mode. Oh, you're gonna do this to me, eh? All-fire. Boom. Job. Right in the hole, that's what she said. Um... I apologize, that was crass. There we go, nice boom. All right, that real- the- that, uh, rivet gun is actually a little satisfying, I'll, I'll give you that. But anyway, like, I'm sitting at a desk so I can actually record this thing, so the Wii bar, the, the like, sensor bar is just, like, literally right in front of me, so I kinda have to hold the Wiimote actually quite high in order for it to get picked up. Like, it's- so if I'm sitting up, the Wiimote is pretty much at my chin level, or my mouth level almost, you know? I'm like holding it next to my head, so it's kind of an awkward place. Um... Awkward place to... To hold it. So I mean, I think that might be part of the reason why I always complain about Wii, uh, Wii games, because I'm... You know, I, I'm just in a weird position, trying to record this. Sitting at a desk. You know, man was never meant to play the Wii this way. In the same way man was never meant to disturb this ancient monolith. Press A to interact. Okay, so here's a question. Where do, where do we put the Wii on the retro gaming scale? 
This is something that we've talked about. We haven't really, like, had a good discussion about this in a while. Maybe opinions have changed. It's been a couple years, you know. Um, our relationship is measured in the scale of years, guys, because we've been doing this. This is, like, our ninth year of doing the Thousand and One Quest, if my math is correct. We're in year nine right now. So we've completed eight, and we're, like, 8.4 years in. So that's technically the ninth year. Anyway. Um, so, like... I, I think, like, undebatably, you know, the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, those are all retro consoles, all retro games. I know some people consider the PS1 retro. I don't really, uh, because it was sort of... it. I think it's... What it, the thing that's retro to you is whatever came out when you were a kid. So, honestly, for me... I was like in my teens when the PlayStation and the N64 came out. And so to me, they seemed like newer systems when I was like in high school. And as a result, I don't really think of them as retro. Um, and this might just be justification. Maybe I'm just looking for a reason to, ra to rationalize this. But I kind of view everything before 3D as retro. So anything that was sprite based. Um, and so, with the PS1 and the N64, the thing that really separated them from the consoles that came before is they were getting into the realm of polygons. And once you go polygonal, it's like everything changes, you know? Like, Doom was a 3D game, but it was technically a 2.5D game. Um, so it was really like a retro first-person shooter. Um, we gotta shake the Wiimote there. Um... Did I do it? Okay, yeah, this is spooky, by the way. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, once you get into Realm of 3D, I feel like things change, and that's when I feel like retro, things aren't really retro anymore. Things can definitely be old, and like, you can have like, oh, like, an, the old school PS1 and stuff, but, uh, anyway, maybe you think the PS1, uh, is a retro console, and maybe the N64 is a retro console to you, so maybe we have differing definitions there. Um, but I think we can both agree that the NES and the Super Nintendo certainly are retro. So then here's the question, like, where does it, where does it go from here? You know, like, even if you want to call the PS1 retro, like, is the Xbox retro? Is the PS2 retro? Is the PS3 retro? Is the Wii retro? Right? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I used to have a stronger opinion about this. I mean, I still have a personal opinion, but I care less whether other people agree with me or not. Not in the sense that, like, you know, like, uh, not, not to be rude about it or anything, but I'm just sort of like, well, I mean, I have my own... When I say, when I say retro, I know what I mean, and I don't mean anything beyond the PS1, right? Um... I'll shoot you! But, uh, oh, this guy's gone feral. I, I tried to shoot him, but I wasn't allowed. Um, so anyway, I know what I mean when I say retro, but what do you guys mean? What do you guys mean? And we can have different definitions, we can still be friends. Um, this guy's trying to kill me. There we go. Got him first. We sucked his plasma cutter out. Should we get this guy too? I can't... I can't believe this. Sam. Get that rock saw. We may need it. Alright. Rock saw. Jesus Christ, we just killed someone. We don't have time to think about that. If we don't, don't worry about it, we're gonna kill a lot of people. We'll all be dead. Move. I'm using two hands in the Wii mode. I think it'll be better for me. Look out! More of them! They've all gone oh god. Crazy. Oh, I headshotted that guy. Oh, I shut his arm off and he was still coming after me. So these are space zombies. Welcome to the party. Plasma cutter. I wish I could actually- I'm not controlling the way my guy's face looks or anything. By the way, I think it's hilarious that when you started this game, it was like, you need a nunchuck! Uh, but... At the same time, I've literally put the nunchuck down. I'm like, it's a waste of hand. To use it. Um... There we go, just shoot him right in the old face bulb. Anyone else want? I can barely see, by the way. It would be real nice if this, uh, if, if we got a bit of light in here. I know we're supposed to be killing space zombies, but just a little light would be nice. 
Do a quick reload here. I'm surprised my AI companions are surviving. I feel like they should be dead by now, but maybe that's just me. See, I don't know. I mean, you know, ultimately it doesn't matter what we define as retro, but I... This is the first Wii game we've played in a little while. And I was, like, reconnecting my Wii to, like, my Elgato so I could actually record it. And as I was plugging everything in, I was like, man... I definitely remember when I started this quest, and I got a Wii. Yeah, I mean, the Wii was... The Wii was old... Oh, they finally make us use the nunchuck. The Wii was old when we started. Like, let's not, you know, mince... I was gonna say mince meat, but let's not mince words here. Um, the Wii was no spring chicken when we started the Thousand One Quest, but it still, I at the time wouldn't have considered it retro. But now, like so much time has passed, I'm like, I don't know. Like, if you consider it retro, maybe it's retro. Who knows? But I mean, like now, like when did the Wii come out? It came out like 20 years ago, didn't it? <laughs> or something, something like horrifically insane. Um, then press B to shoot him away. Yeah, I got the plasma cutters. Now what, dog? <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, there we go. Stop! Um, she looks this. infected. <laughs> Just like stabbing herself to death. That's a little horrifying. I like how my character, I wasn't allowed to shoot her. He's like, no, no, no. She's killing herself. Don't. Interrupt a good thing. Alright. Now, do games like this spook you? Here's another good question. I remember when I played the first, uh... uh not like the first Doom, but like the Doom remake. Um... Was it just called Doom? It was like released on PC and you had a flashlight that you could hold in one hand. But I remember playing that, and if you played it with the lights off, that game actually did spook you quite a bit. Especially in the early levels where you're very weak, and you don't understand the operation of the game. The further you get, the more you, like, you learn its tricks, and you learn where imps are going to pop out, and you get more guns, and you get more powerful, and then it becomes less scary. But especially when you're very weak in those early levels, that, that Doom remake was actually really spooky. Um, and then another game that I remember being quite spooky was Amnesia, uh, The Dark Descent. And that game was a first-person game where you had no weapons. Where literally when there was like a monster hunting you, and when you heard it coming, all you could do is like dive into a closet and close the door and hope it didn't catch you. And you could like peek out at it, but if you stared directly at it, it would start to go mad, so you, you couldn't really look for too long. Uh... Cool. I like how we're... We're taking, like, uh... We're just improvising, you know? We're- we're- we're taking... Uh, like, mining equipment and we're using that. Like, plasma cutters and rivet guns and stuff. I kinda dig that part of this game. Well, it does remind me a bit of aliens, you know? Cause they were- they were originally miners. Uh, I believe. Or like, cargo haulers or truckers or something. Oh, good- Good job, idiot. Oh god. Shake the Wiimote. Oh god. Shake, shake. Press A. Oh god. We got him. Just sucking life forces out of dead corpses here. Barely. Needs us to. Can I do like an alt fire? Let's just do this and get out of here. Okay. We'll do, sir. Look out! There's more! Shit! Get behind me! Oh god. Melee! 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 Get out of here! Where's my- where's my re targeting reticle? Oh wait, I'm, I'm pressing- I, I'm not pressing to shoot, I'm pressing to like... ...grab items. Yeah, I'm just terrible at, uh... Terrible at shooters on the Wii, I, I think I've come to conclude. I feel like I'm not scared in this game at all, but... I think maybe if I was playing this and I wasn't streaming... Uh... It might be a little scarier, especially if, like, the lights were off or something. Oh god, shake the Wiimote. Press the A button. 
Okay, here we go. Oh god, Egan. There we go. I'm sorry. Egan's dead, man. Is it? Oh god, that sounded like an evil Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Moon! Moon is another really good sci-fi movie that's actually pretty creepy. That, that one's an interesting one because there's there's no, like, monsters per se or anything, but it's, it's like, very isolating and creepy nonetheless. It's a very good sci-fi movie. If you haven't seen it, it has Sam Rockwell. I wouldn't say it's, like, a scary, scary movie, but it more has a bit of a creep factor. Um, it's also a very tragic story. It's it's a great movie though. It's I guess it fits in you you can watch it during Halloween. Uh, but it's you know, don't expect like an actual like monster movie. Uh, watch Event Horizon if you want like the scary version of space. What is this? A rivet gun. I'm trying to save you! Trying to save you by shooting rivets into your face. You're the health. There we go. How do we reload? Oh, we can actually look around. Oh, that's nice. Let me give you the option. I wish there was a better way to reload. I think you just have to run out of bullets and then you reload. Now, if this had been a rail shooter in arcades, I feel like this would have done very well because... As much, as much as I'm like, I'm not a huge fan of rail shooters in general, but I feel like where they do belong is the arcades, you know? Like, I guess, when, if I'm playing, like, a game like this that I'm playing at home, just need a stasis my reaction is, I want this to be a third-person shooter, you know? Like, I just feel like you lose a little something by having it be a, uh, press the C button, it's this one. By having it be a, uh, a rail shooter, you just lose control. Uh, fun fact, did you guys know that Goldeneye for the N64 originally began its life as... What am I doing here? Okay. We go like that, to that, to that. There we go. Um, Goldeneye for the N64 began its life as a rail shooter, and then the developers decided it was more fun to actually be able to control where you go, and so they modified it so it was a first-person shooter, and that, like, made it suddenly way more interesting and fun. And I still maintain that... I don't know. Uh, here, here's another question. You guys can, can, can weigh in on this, too. Because this, this is an opinion-based question. But I think, personally, I, do, I can't think of any gameplay that is enhanced by being a rail shooter as opposed to, like, a first- or third-person shooter. Like, being in control of your character, I think, only adds to the game. And so I think rail shooters... To me, rail shooters were sort of like a, a, a necessity in their era, you know? It was like, before you could really make good third- or first-person shooters, you know, computers and arcades and stuff were limited, so it's like, yeah, things were rail shooters. That's the best you could do. But these days... I would say everything should be first or third person. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Here's where it's opinion-based. What do you guys think? Are there, like, rail shooters that you think would do worse if they were turned into first or third person shooters? Or do you just, like, really like rail shooters? Do you, like, enjoy them and... Maybe there's something you like about them that's better than a first or third person sh shooter in, in your uh, opinion. You know, again, this is opinion based, so... Um, you know, you can disagree in the comments down below and nobody should chew you out. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious, because, I mean, again, I'm of the mentality that I kind of feel like first and third person shooters, man. Uh, like, like, everything I'm seeing here could be a first- or third-person shooter, and I feel like it, it, it wouldn't take anything away. In fact, I would enjoy it more, because I'd be in control of where I'm going, you know? I'd be able to explore more. So. Yeah. Anyway, crew's going mad, getting taken over by zombies. Just hold tight, baby. I'll fix it, I promise. Hold tight, baby. Hold on to your buns, toots. I got this one. Stay away from me! I like the optimism where every time he encounters like a new zombie creature, he's like, you know what, maybe this one will listen. Maybe if- maybe if I'm just... You know... Oh god, that creepy voice in the back of your head. 
I like the fact that there's like a little mystery. Well, there was a box over there I missed. See, in a third person shooter, you could just break that box. I guess in a, a rail shooter, it's like they add uh, the urgency of time so that you can't just take your time and get every item. So this is the one, I guess, advantage gameplay-wise is you can sort of make things more interesting in that respect, but... I don't know, I still, uh... I'm still ride or die, first slash third person shooter. I think generally I prefer third person to first person shooters, but... You know, I'll, I'll take either, really. Give me that health. Yeah, what am I doing here? Oh, my guy just jumped. He's floating. I mean, I guess, like, things like this, where you're kind of floating through space. There. Nah, you could do it as a... You could do it as a... Third-person shooter. I don't know. Almost got it. Boom. I like these little puzzles. I like when games add little mini games. It's funny, like in the history of playing games, we've played like Sokoban and other games, like like that that little mini game we just played to unlock the power. You you know there are games where it's like literally that's the whole game. You just play a bunch of levels like that, um, and those games are fine. But they're, they're like these days, I'd say they're more relegated to like smartphone style games or sort of like small little games that like are fun enough, but they're mostly there to just sort of eat up time when you're on the bus. Um, but it's cool that, like, you know, in the history of gaming, like, at one point, that was a game. It was, that was the full game. Um, but now, they've become, like, little mini-games, like, games within a game. So it's kind of cool that they still exist, and by themselves, they're almost too simple to survive as solo games, but they work well as companions to a game like this, right? Like, you could add those little puzzle elements to anything. Because they're still fun, right? But it's just like, are you going to play 40 minutes of that little puzzle game? Probably not. But are you going to play 8 hours of this with 40 minutes of puzzle baked into it? Probably. Oh, God! Oh, God. Shake the Wiimote. Uh-oh. Is that my girlfriend? Did she turn evil? It's like a Jason Voorhees style character. It's like wearing a Jason mask. Yeah, my guy's hallucinating. Hello? Who's there? Oh, I love that cre that creepy voice, the hallucinations and stuff. Oh, you know what other game this this reminds me of a little bit, just a little bit, is um. You'll see. We can't stop it. I'm Sterling. Oh God, I thought you were. I gotta get out of here. Back to Lexine. They should make a movie out of this. Like, like, no joke. Like, even though I'm like, you know, ah, I wish this was a first-person shooter and this and that, it's like I'm enjoying it enough, and like, yeah, there's... There's, like, good stuff in here. Like, this this is creepy as hell, like... It's very Event Horizon. Um, but it also reminds me a little bit of, uh, Alan Wake. Uh, if you guys have ever played Alan Wake. Uh, that's a good game. That That's more of, a, like, a reality-bending game, but it's, like, about a writer who gets lost in the woods and then, like, townspeople all try and kill him. Um, it's sort of Stephen King-esque. The main character is a writer, and it seems like the things he's writing are coming true, but he writes horror mystery novels and stuff. We're not going to die. Um. Oh, more bad guys. Die! I wonder, is there gonna be a boss fight or something? Are we still- I- I don't even know, like, are we on the first level? Does this game believe in levels? Not 100% sure here. No, no, leave me alone! I have to get to Lexane, do you hear me? I'm guessing this elevator is... Oh, something happened to me. Lexine, help me! Maybe this is the end of the first level. You're not. Hostile is down. Repeat. Hostile is down. Good shot, sir. Shooting one of your own is never good. He's not even packing a gun. You're shooting. <laughs> He's just got a plasma cutter and rivet gun he's been impaling others with. Lex. He's gone. Call Commander James and get Doc Sciarello down here. He's gonna have a busy day. 
Oh, I died. Oh, that's cool. Wow, how intriguing. Continue. Chapter 2. Very cool. Well, I don't think we're going to go much further ourselves because, you know, um, reasons. Because, you know, we, we're checking these games out. I've got a good sense of what this game's like. I feel like, you know, I've heard good things about Dead Space. I've heard it's creepy, it's scary, the story is cool. Um, definitely, even with just that opening chapter, even barely paying attention to the story, I felt creeped out. I thought it was cool. I thought there were some cool mystery element. Like, I'm really genuinely curious about the story. I swear, they should make a movie or a Netflix series or something out of this, because um, I I feel like you got a lot of cool elements here. Like, it feels like Stephen King and Love, Lovecraftian, and you got Event Horizon and and so many elements to it. it. It felt creepy. It was like Doom. I'm excited to check out the next Dead Space that we'll check out. I think it's on PS3 or something like that. We'll get to it eventually. Um, but it makes me feel like I really should try out this series more. I mean, when Halloween does roll around officially, you know, not at the beginning of September, but the end of October, we usually do take a little detour and play some random horror games. Maybe I should try and work a Dead Space in this year or next, I don't know. But anyway guys, what do you think of Dead Space Extraction here? Is it a game that you've played before? Did it creep you out? Is it going to give you nightmares? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, whatever you think of the game, hopefully you had some fun with me. Hopefully some of the things I asked you about, you'll have your own opinions on. You can chime in down in the comments down below. And uh, other than that, hopefully you just laid back, you listened, you had fun. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, get your grandmother subscribed, your best friend, your wife, your children, all those people. Everyone needs to be subscribed, guys. Every Subscriptions for everyone. Um, or you can just... Do nothing and come back in a few days and watch another video. Hey, that's a pretty good idea, too. Guys, I hope you did have fun. Um, and I wish you all the best. And uh, other than that, I will catch you in the next video. So until next time, my friends, do take care of yourselves. In peace.